Hello, 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 and welcome back to another trek through the dungeon. I'm in a particularly odd mood today. I kind of feel like getting myself killed. I've been feeling relatively masochistic, and you know something? I figured that would make this a great time to play Dungeon Crawl. Uh, in all seriousness, though, I've been craving uh, uh, the experience of being the stealthy assassin, and I haven't played an assassin for a while. And by assassin, I mean stabber, not actual assassin. So, we're gonna be, uh... What's a good name for an assassin? Shadowblade. Shadowblade, I like it. Works for a necroman, too. And really quickly, we're gonna take a look. I I'm gonna go with a spriggan, most likely, because I've done spriggan stabbers and I enjoy the hell out of them. But I just want to take a quick look and see if there's maybe some other alternative I should really be thinking about. So, here we go. Stealth and Stab. These are the two properties that most interest me. Felids, uh, no, no thank you. Felids are their own kelfish. Kobolds apparently can make reasonably decent stabbers, though their transition into magery is probably not as smooth. Nagas are stealthy, but with that kind of speed, I would want no part of that. And Spriggans are 4-4. I mean, that's just, come on. How do you argue with that? Vampires would make pretty reasonable stabbers, but for the fact that they have all manner of problems with, uh... Well, they have problems with transformations, but that's not the same as having problems with, uh... I don't know, how's, how, how are their defenses? Dodging is okay, and, and armor is negative. Dodging is excellent, and... Honestly, at the end of the day, the, the Spriggan has the Holy Triumvirate of 444 and relatively low penalties to their experience as a result. It's just the health that really suffers. Vampire is 0, zero and, and Spriggan is minus 3. So, yeah. Well, I could run a Vampiric Stabber, but today and right now, I'm not feeling like being that experimental. So, Spriggan Stabber, welcome Shadowblade to the field. Uh, we're either going to run Stalker and specialize in Ensorcelled Hibernation plus Confuse, or Wizard and start off more as a Blaster Caster and then transition into Stabber. I would actually prefer the latter approach to the former for one simple reason, and that is that uh, Mephitic Cloud plus Blink are good survival tools, whereas I don't feel the Stalker is gifted with the same. The only survival tool I have with him is my ability to run. I'm going to turn off everything except stabbing initially, just to raise the damage on that, and uh, focus spell casting because I want to get the hunger cost down on my primaries. As it is, I already have hungerless casting of my level 1 spell, which is good. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, out of mana, and halfway dead, and oh my god, I revealed two new enemies. Hey, this run might not last that long after all. Uh, I have to run blind, I don't have another choice. If I keep putting distance between me and them, they might just lose sight of me. That would be great. Stack of darts? Excellent. I'm going to use this to start kiting. Okay, that's one, and magic dart the other. Normally, I never use darts, but uh, in the first floor and the second floor, third floor, you do anything you can to survive. Anything. Except cheating, obviously, I mean, I guess that goes without saying. Um, I'm really feeling like playing a Stabber today, and so I'm probably going to run Ashen Zari. Even though he's not the optimal choice, he is certainly an acceptable choice. <laughs> I just really want to get that whole benefit of being able to see through walls. Uh, we'll go Blink immediately. Hunger is still existent for Blink, so that needs to be reduced. Alright, and now we're becoming enough, like, sufficiently more powerful that I can actually take some enemies on. Enemies that just before I ran from... Nothing wielded? Oh, what the heck? Give me a dagger. Thing about Sprig and Hunger, for those of you who have not, for some bizarre reason, seen me do any Sprig and Runs, uh, it's both good and bad. The good is, it's very easy to man- it's easy to manage. Uh, or it's simple, I should say. It's simple to manage. Because Spriggans can only eat uh, permafood. They can only eat vegetables. They don't eat any meat. And therefore, for the most part, can only eat permafood. I can't think of any non-meat that, that qualifies. Uh, 
and only some of that as well. So it's this very, very stark limitation. If you run out of permafood sources, uh, you're pretty screwed. That said, Spriggans also get massive nutrition bonuses to the little food that they do eat, uh, which which makes it a lot easier to handle their hunger. So I could right now eat all of my bread rations and not be ha and not have to worry about ill effects down the road. That cockroach should block them from opening that door for a while. Give me time to learn within a cloud and conjure flame, because in these early stages of the game, I'm going to have to do that. Yeah, so. Um, eventually I'm gonna have to eat something for hunger's sake, and when that eventuality happens, it won't matter, uh, that I've eaten permafood or not, because I, there's nothing to hold out for, you know? I'm not holding out for better permafood or something, for the most part. So, yeah. Spriggans, very straightforward. You get permafood, you eat permafood. If you don't have any permafood, well, you're screwed. It's not easy, but it is simple. darts until he goes down. Nope, he's not going down. Something walked into a fire. Okay, I'm just gonna get out of this floor before something bad happens to me. Let's go to the next floor. Stabbing skill now exists. Good. I unfortunately am not stealthy enough to walk right up to things because I'm not training stealth just yet. Um, I am always concerned with, uh, oh, that was a miscast, damn it. Yeah, I'm always concerned with the possibility of dying early on, and I'm willing to make skill alterations down the road. The reason I not I don't want to invest too heavily in conjurations is because that's a dead-end street for me. I don't intend to become a powerful conjurator in the end. So... But investing heavily in spellcasting makes perfect sense, because that's going to be a benefit for every spell I use, and it's going to make any school that I go into uh, easier to use. I will probably put some points into poison and air, just just to make mephitic easier to learn, or to cast, because a 34% fail on mephitic is just not acceptable. And I might put a couple points into conjuration, because while it is technically a loss of experience, it is a relatively minor loss of experience uh, to lose just the trivial amount that you use to get up the first few levels. Okay, first wand. I wonder what we're dealing with here. Confusion. Excellent. So I should really restrict my, my magic usage to magic dart at this point. My mephitic is not that reliable, and uh, my dart isn't even reliable, so... I need to use it many times to make it work. Okay, what do we got here? Nothing that's going to help me with my stabbing goals and everything that's going to help me with my... if I were to change my mind and say, actually, I'm a blaster caster. So, for the time being, I'm not forced to make decisions on tier 2 spells, but like anybody playing a game like this, you have to be willing to adapt based to what the dungeon gives you, and uh, if that's all I get for spells between now and mid lair. I guess you know when I'm running for the light. Oh, do you step onto a fire, you idiot? You're dead. An orc and a statue. Okay. Good. Glowing orcish dagger. Ooh, tantalizing. It shines. <gasps> Speed! Speed daggers are among the best stabbing weapons, honestly. Um, not necessarily for the whole game, but for the early game, at least. And the mid-game because you get multiple opportunities to attempt the stab more rapidly. Okay. That... I have three bread rations, so I'm just going to chow down on one of them. There's pretty much never a good reason to let your Spriggan get hungry, since once you decide he's not going to be hungry, he's going to have to eat the big stuff anyway. Just don't try and... Just try and avoid eating past engorged stat status. Okay, that's a takedown. Let's 
skeleton takedown, rat takedown. Okay, so so far so good. Um, I really am beginning to realize that uh, this stabbing needs to. Until I'm willing to train more stuff, I shouldn't just change tra train stabbing in isolation. Uh, Conjuration's next. I still don't have a good disable spell to make good on it. Now's a good time to also turn on Conjurations just to trickle into that as well. Put on a ring. It's notched. Let's just go ahead and try and ID this sucker. Nothing I need forgotten just yet. But I would like to ditch these scrolls for later. RF. Are you kidding me? That's my enchant armor scroll. And that's my ID scroll. Okay. Life protection is obviously not my first choice of skill, but... Okay, very good. A couple kills. And obviously you guys saw how I treated that water moccasin with incredible respect. I don't know what my cure item looks like, so if I get bit by that guy for 10 damage and poisoned, the game could be over right then and there. But I really want to draw him all the way to this staircase, which is so far separated from the rest of that area, so that I don't have to face him directly. Easy, easy sledge since he was asleep. I'm gonna wake up Ijib and bring him back. Perfect. The use of fires was primarily to prevent explore, uh, walking into the unknown while being chased. 13 health is not enough to be engaged in these fights. Down again. God, I wish I had a deity to be gaining piety with for all of this work. Let's go ahead and eat another bread ration. It should push me all the way to engorge. And you'll notice that my satiety is still was still at full this whole time off of just that one ration this entire game. Spriggan hunger has only once actually cost me the game. I didn't die of starvation, I died of being driven to the point that I had to make stupid decisions because I needed food. And that's as a guy who used to main running a Spriggan Wizard as his build of choice. Hey, you know what? Here's what we're gonna do. You stand on top of this arrow trap. Okay, I can't unfortunately go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you if you're gonna just one-shot me. Got him. How is he wearing chainmail? Ow. I suck if it takes that hard to take down a guy in chainmail. With Menkare, the only way I'm going to be happy is if I can stab her. I am wearing life protection, which is going to help somewhat with her uh, inevitable attacks. Uh, and then this has to happen. You know what? I'm going to gather up the spear so that he doesn't throw it at me again. And quickly battle my way through here. At 20 mana, I should be able to do something, so here's what we're going to try to do. Confuse plus double fire. Yes, and he went down. And the only reason I'm poisoned is because of the uh, miscast effect of Mephitic Cloud. So we're going to go up the floor, wait out the poison, return, and unfortunately I still don't have any really good information on these potions. Let's try one of them for ID's purposes. Yep, the one I had two of was curing potion. Almost always, if you're looking for your cure potions, it'll be the one you have the most of, or one of those. Uh, let's go ahead and eliminate the risk of accidentally buying the dangerous poisons. And then we'll ditch them. I think I might have accidentally bought strong poison repeatedly and not actually bought the ordinary poison. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Oh well, waste of money. 
Uh, that snake is aware. He does, does, may not know where I am exactly, but he's aware of me. So we're going to return to where we fought Menkare, or where we saw Menkare, however that's pronounced, if that is your real name. Heal up mana, and try the third, no, this is also going to lead directly into her waiting eyes, so there is no clean way to get there without being seen at all. We'll try the long hallway, it's my best bet. Nope, she's awake. Miscast Conjure Flame, Miscast Conjure Flame, Miscast Conjure Flame, Miscast Conjure Flame. That was four times in a row. Statistically, the odds of that happening are 1 in 4 to the 4th power is 64 times 4. 1 in 216 odds. It was actually even less likely than that. Yay, we got it up. Alright, now that smite targeting of pain is obviously a problem, so we should just get out of here. It may not be smite targeting, I'm not certain, but with nothing to interpose, it might as well be. Okay, strength, of course. I, I keep going strength, because until my strength is 7 or 8, I don't feel like I have enough of it. Goblin Fortress is fine. I'm happy to poke my head into a Goblin Fortress. I'm more worried about my back than my front, honestly, at this point. Getting back attacked again very badly. Let's see... If I can't pick any of them off... Do one of these. And one of these. Something here is gonna die. They're all dead. Great. Uh, dodging... Dodging is one of those skills that I can never have enough of. Stealth is one of those skills that you can have enough of, but really it takes a lot before you do. And, uh... Stabbing, again, you can have enough of it, but it does scale all the way up to the very end, as long as you still have means of disabling targets. Conjure Flame is more castable than before. We're going to let Conjurations hit level 2 before I switch over to something else. And you know what? There's a very real chance that I'm just not going to be able to play the stabber I wanted to play. And if that happens, uh, ouch, but what can you do? Um, alternatively, I might switch to Ashenzari and be like, hey, I, can, I now have a bunch of experience that I can use. Let's go ahead and turn off con- well no, let's leave Conjur- actually, Conjuration is at a minus three penalty, right? So let's turn on Poison and Air, uh, because Magic Dart- I don't know, I kind of want to raise the power on that too, but for the moment, we're going to leave it that way. Blink also, I want to get that out of fail range, so yeah, turn off Dodging and slow down on spellcasting until these spells are all more castable. Alright, items. Cash, thank you. Kobolds and goblins. What despicable company. It's like cops and robbers, kobolds and goblins. No new daggers of note. Oh, I'm in a net. It's time to get my way out of there. No! Mancari from behind could kill me in one turn, so very important to get way the hell out of sight. Also, Mancari from behind means that God knows who else has shifted around in the meantime, so all of a sudden, this whole floor is technically unsafe for me. Mercifully, he walked into the fire eventually. It's always the hope when you confuse your target. Oh no, it's a dead end. Okay, here's what we're gonna do.
I have a retreat spot. I'm just gonna try and kill the snake. I'm gonna pull it. I, mean, I don't even care. There we go, it's dead. And yeah, I got poisoned, but it wasn't bad. And I have curing potions if it had been bad. Okay, that's a much more acceptable blink failure rate. Um, but I am gonna leave this poly training page up for a little bit. Uh, new ring. Oh, that's bank. ID scroll, no ID scroll, okay. Try on the ring, ring of fire. Remove the ring. Can put it on if there's a indication. Actually there is. Currently Conjure Flames is one of my primary means of dealing damage. So raising its spell power is gonna be a relatively beneficial move. Except for the few times I'm up against an icy enemy. At which point I should remember to take it off. the audacity to shoot her once and she just smites me with pain. Clearly I'm not going to be able to kill Mankare, so let's just leave this floor as it is. Mm -hmm. Down we go. Wields a blowgun with Kirari. That's going to be very painful. I need to disable that guy now. You disable him yesterday. Let's dive into the temple. I can use this as a staging point if things go wrong. Fire should take this guy down. And I'm pretty sure that Kirari guy was only temporarily disabled. Nope, he got mauled to death by dogs or something. Alright, all 20 mana is drained, so it's time to dive into the temple. Pick a god. Ashenzari is in fact available, and he is the one I wanted, so he is my guy. Uh, I have a couple removed curses, which is nice. We can ditch that, ditch that. I don't know if I have any curse scrolls, so let's just check this real quick. I'm not actually certain whether or not he would tell me if I did. I assume he would, but I don't know. I'm going to save the remainder of these scrolls for later. They're almost certainly going to be useful. And I'm going to ditch the cursed scrolls as well. But I do need to start gaining piety relatively soon, so I am on the lookout for, you know, cursing scrolls. Alright, you know what? This is probably a reasonable spot to stop. Um, I'll continue this run in a little bit, and uh, we'll go from there later, but... For the moment, it's been a reasonable start, so it's a good point to, to call the quits before things go wrong. Thank you all for watching, I will see you guys next time!